let's have a summary. In the semiconductor, eventually we have two types of mechanisms for the carriers to move. One is drift, one is diffusion. And also we have two kinds of carrier, electron and hole. Of course, if you dope with one type of doping, then you will have uh, one majority carrier, one ma minority carrier, and the ma majority one will dominate. But if you don't ignore the other one, then you consider all of them, then there will be four components into the current equation here. And this uh, is called the DD model, because this considers the drift and diffusion. For example, here the total current density is uh, the sum of the electron current density plus the whole current density. And then for the electron current density, it has two components, drift and diffusion. For the drift, this is uh, what we have before. So this is due to the electric field, and then we have the mobility of electron here. And then for the diffusion, then we have this equation in the previous slide. So it's just the sum of those two. And similarly for the hole, we have the mobility for the hole and the electrical field, and then the diffusion component of the hole. So this is just a, a combination of the, all the components here. But of course, as I said, so it, it's a N-type doping, then the electron current will dominate. Then you can ignore the other one. Any questions? All right, so let's look at the, the here, the case, when you have a piece of N-type silicon, and then you have a bias. Now, 0.7 volts, if you have a battery or your DC voltage, 0.7 volts across this piece of silicon, then let's see what will happen. So basically you apply voltage to the silicon. And here for example you have a piece of silicon as that resistor, silicon resistor, and this is n type doping. Then what will happen? So you will have current flow, right? This is like a resistor. Essentially, it's like a resistor. You have a resistor here. So you have an electric field. This is positive. This is the ground. And you have electric field this way, and also the current flow this way. But what happened, let's say, inside this piece of silicon is that, let's say, if we think this is a zero and this is along the x <coughs> axis, so if you drop the voltage across the n-type silica from the left to the right or from the zero to the x direction, if you drop the voltage across that, then this volume will linearly drop from the zero, which is a the left terminal, left electrode, and then it will end to the right terminal. So this 0.7 volts voltage will linearly drop along this x direction. Then the electrons here will move. Right? Electrons will, you know, will move to the left. This is n type then the majority carrier is electron, then electron will move to the left, of course, to the higher potential voltage potential for electrons. So this is easy to understand, but the, what is uh, more important here we want to discuss is the energy band diagram. So this is a very important concept here. Uh, so we talk about the ECEV, right, for the silicon, the band, the silicon band. And then we want to know how the band change if we have 
external voltage in this case. So here, this is the band diagram for this case. You will see that if we have external voltage, the band will be tilted. Okay, it will not be horizontal. And uh, the reason is uh, like this. So you can think the derivative of the band, let's say, like EC or EV, those are the end, remember? The band talks about the energy level for electrons. So that means the EC or EV are actually the electron energy. Okay. So if you take the Let's say the electric field by definition is the derivative of the voltage respect to the let's say x direction. So this is a, a by definition of electric field. If you take the voltage, voltage is derivative, then you get the electric field. And the voltage, you know. Q times voltage, the charge multiplied by the voltage will be the electron's energy. So then you will get, because Q times V equals to the, for example, EC here. So you can plug in the uh, V to be the EC divided by Q here. Or that's a negative Q, because the electron is negative charge. So you will get this one. Essentially, it says that the electric field is the gradient of the energy. Or in the energy band diagram, it basically says the slope of your EC is the electric field. So that means in this energy band diagram, you can look at the slope of your EC. In this case, it will be positive slope. That means the electric field is positive to the right. right. <coughs> this is because we here we apply this positive field into this silicon. And then the band is tilted in this way. Or you can think in another way, which is from the volume perspective. So if you apply positive voltage to the left hand side of the silicon next year, you are going to raise up the voltage 0.7. Meanwhile, it means that you are going to push down the energy band by 0.7 electron volts. Because you know the higher voltage actually means lower energy potential for electron because electrons are electrically charged. So if you have higher voltage, that means lower electron potential for the for electrons. So in other words, this is a very important conclusion for you to, to notice. Positive, positive, let's say positive voltage will push down the band. That means here. Positive voltage applied to the left hand side will push down the band. This is very important conclusion because later when we analyze the pin junction or the MOSFET transistor, we are going to use this again and again. Remember the positive voltage is going to push down the band. In this case, we apply positive voltage to the left terminal. That means the left hand side of this silicon, the band, the EC, will be pushed down. So
So the EV will follow the same slope because the silicon the band gap, EG, is a constant. So no matter which location here, then this EG, the band gap, will keep a constant. So that means the EV will follow the same slope. Okay. And similarly for the EF, the Fermi level will also follow the same slope. Any questions? And then another important concept here is uh, we will see how the electron drift here. So you know electrons are in the conduction band and holes is in the valence band. So here we will see that electrons move to the left. Right here we show the electron move to the left for the positive voltage. Or from the energy band diagram, we will show that electrons are falling down this keel. So this is a very important conclusion again. In the energy band diagram, if you have slope of your band, in this case, like the EC, has this kind of slope, then the electrons will fall down along that slope. Or in other words, electrons always try to go to lower, uh, let's say lower potential. This is a very important concept here. Electrons try to follow here. Meanwhile, you will say that hole will move up. If this is a p-type silicon, then you have hole. The hole will move up along the keel here. Or if you still cannot remember this, I will make another an energy for you. You can always think that electrons are like water. Okay. Water always like to go where? Downstream, right? So electrons like water. Okay, remember this. So always go to the lower potential in the energy band. Then the hole here, like what? If you want to make that an energy, you can imagine holes are like uh, bubble. bubble in the water. Also, always want to you know go up, pop up. So 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 uh, 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 if you use this, you can easily remember electrons go down and then holes go up. Any questions? So this is a drift. Then let's look at this example, which is a little bit tricky. So here, if we have a piece of long uniformly doped semiconductor, okay. Long uniformly doped. That means, for example, if this is n-type semiconductor, and if you have, let's say, higher doping density here. To the left hand side, this Na1 is larger than this Na2. So to the left hand side, you have higher doping density. Because you know one dopant, let's say one donor will contribute one electron. So you have more electrons to the left and then less electron to the right. This is non uniform doped. Okay. And uh, if you have this kind of uh, situation, then you will know what will happen first. This is a non-uniform dopant. Diffusion, right? We talk about <coughs> diffusion. So the electrons tend to diffuse. Okay. This is diffusion. And then my question is, uh, after the electrons diffuse from left to the right, Okay, then it will somehow be stopped, okay, this process. It will achieve some equilibrium state eventually. So then what determines this equilibrium? This is a question we need to discuss here. So here, remember here we don't apply the voltage externally. This is unlike the previous case, we apply external voltage to the silicon. Here is the without 
without any external voltage. So then we can analyze this through the energy band diagram. So that's why this energy band diagram is important. So then if we have this kind of doping, you can imagine, you can also draw the energy band diagram. And uh, you will see that to the left hand side here, this delta E is smaller than the delta E here. Why is that? Any idea? If you have two pieces of silicon, right, if you have two questions for you, then if you only look at the left hand side, if you draw the energy band, then you may have this because the doping density is higher, so the EF is closer to the EC. If you have the only have the right hand side, then if you draw the energy band diagram, you will probably has you will probably have this uh, uh, EF uh, farther from the EC because of a lower. Uh, sorry, this is should be an type doping, so I should have N D or N. So you have this kind of difference in terms of the distance from the Fermi level to the edge of the PC. And uh, here there is another very important concept that is in the equilibrium state. Equilibrium means equilibrium state. That means without voltage, okay, that means external voltage is zero. If, it's, if the semiconductor is in the equilibrium state without external voltage, it will achieve some stable state. And in this stable state, the very important concept is that the Fermi level will be horizontal. There's only one Fermi level in the equilibrium state. Then there is the EF will be flat. So this is a very important concept. The EF is flat. And then you will have, if EF is flat, and then we know the distance from EF to the EC will be determined by the doping density. And to the left hand side, higher doping density, smaller distance here. And to the right hand side, larger, uh, smaller, do small, smaller doping, so higher, larger distance here. That means the EC will have some slope like this. So if EC has slope, that means what? Any idea? We just talked about that in the previous slide. If the energy band has slope, that means what? Yes? That current is what current? It has snow? That means you have what? We just said the snow is uh, the electric field. So this is uh, this essentially the snow on this EC. That means you have electric field. Electric field pointing. This is the same situation as here. So the electric field pointing here. That means you have some built-in electric field, even though you don't have external field. But within this material, you will have some built-in electric field in this way. Or in other words, this is similar as the previous slide, right? This kind of band. The electrons, as we discussed a minute ago, so electrons, if we have this field, we move to left or right. Left. Left. Okay. Electrons go to lower potential, right? Like water. So you see that the drift current makes the electron move to the left. But you see the top figure there, the diffusion current here, 
make the electron to the right, right? So essentially, those two will cancel each other. Because you don't apply external voltage, you should not have let current right? to external. You don't have current. Internally, you have diffusion current to the right, drift current to the left, those two cancel each other. So this is what happens here. That's drift and diffusion cancel each other. Any questions? It's a little tricky. So for this example, the mm -hmm. Fermi level is horizontal, so this is what it looks like in equilibrium state. Right? Mm -hmm. So if it's so when it's not in equilibrium state, that's basically when you first apply the electric field. What would it look like then? Would it basically follow the same contour as you see? Yes, so this is this example, right? If you have an external field, then your Fermi level will Fermi level will follow the external voltage drop across the uh, silicon. In this case, the external voltage 0.7 volts linearly drop across the silicon. So your Fermi level is linearly increased in this case. And then generally speaking, would the higher side go down to meet the lower side, or would the lower side rise to the higher side, or would so it be, the, like pivot in the middle? Uh, so first of all, here is the voltage, okay? And then here is the energy. So voltage and energy, you have electric Q. So then the direction is different. That's, that's why here the voltage is dropping, but the energy is uh, rising. Does this answer your question? No, I'm asking more like uh, the Fermi level itself. It starts not horizontal, then it reaches horizontal. I'm just asking what kind of path it takes to reach horizontal. Does uh, the higher Fermi level drop to the lower Fermi level, or just the lower Fermi level? You mean in this case? In this yeah. case, this is non-equilibrium state, because they have external uh, right. voltage. So the Fermi level will not, will not be horizontal. I mean, once it reaches equilibrium. Will it ever reach equilibrium if you can <coughs> you apply a field, or do you have to remove the field for it to reach equilibrium? You have to remove the field. Okay. Yeah, because we define the equilibrium state as uh, as without external voltage. <laughs> and here, we don't call it equilibrium state. You have the voltage, and here we, you have the static current. It's a steady state, but the carriers are moving, so it's not equilibrium state as defined. Mm -hmm. This one? No? All right. Okay, so here we see the diffusion and drift cancel each other. So then let's use that to derive this uh, Einstein relationship between D and Q, or D and V. So let's do that. So here we can start from the electron density equation. So N equals to this NC exponential term. This is what we have before. But here we want to make loads, and now the EC is no longer flat, so EC will change according to the X, the location. So then the EC is changing with X, so EC is respect to the X. And then we can take the derivative of N respect to the X, the <coughs> location along the X. So then if we take DN DX, then the right hand side, we can also take that. The right hand side, only thing change with x is the EC. So we will use a chain room for the derivative. Uh, the derivative. So we will get this one. So you know, exponential term will also keep that. Uh, so you will have this in front of the D EX over DX. So it's just some mass here. Uh, but what you will find out is here, if you look at this term, or oh, not this term, let's see. This term, this is exactly the n. So then you can replace this whole bunch of uh, symbols with just n here. So then it's just n over kt, <coughs> and then d, d, c over dx. And then from the previous slide, you notice that the slope of the EC, the band edge, 
is the electrical field, right? So QE, E is the electrical field. So you get this. So here are some derivations. Uh, you can go through this slowly, and then you can get this. So then we are interested in dn over dx because we want to plug in to the current equation we have before. So this is for electron current density. And at equilibrium state, because without external voltage, the net current is zero, as we discussed. This drift current and the diffusion current cancel each other. So the sum is zero. So here we derive the dn over dx from the previous slide. So it's this one. And then we plug in this one into this equation. So then this dn over dx will be replaced by a, this term. So you will get this one. And then this equals to zero. So you can cancel something, because here this one cancel, cancel, and e cancel. So what is left is this one. The dn equals to kt over q, and then mu n. So essentially it says that the diffusion coefficient dn is proportional to the mobility mu n. And then here are some coefficients, which is kt is the thermal energy, and q is the basic charge quantity. So then those are the constants for the, this those are the constants. So then that means dn is proportional to the mu n. And similarly, you can do the same thing for the whole. You will find out dp is proportional to the mu p. So that means the drift and diffusion has some relationship. And this relationship is known as Einstein relationship. This Einstein is really that one, OK? Because he discovered this one in the semiconductor. Yeah. He did many things. But this one is also yeah, credit to him.